CJR here, and today I have a review of the Retron 5 um, retro gaming console by Hyperkin. Um, we're going to go ahead and pick out a couple games and head up to um, my other game room, kind of my uh, YouTube editing room, and uh, I'll give you guys a uh, good overview of the system and we'll show some gameplay. that I have heard about this system and that is that the cartridge slots are too tight. Um, this is a common thing to me. I replace NES pin connectors all of the time and fix them and, and they get tight. That's what happens with the new system. So I really haven't had much problem. So the cartridge goes in basically. What you have to do is lift up from a corner and brace from the bottom. If you go try and pull it out just like this, straight up, it's not gonna, it's, it's tight, it's gonna have some trouble coming out, but all you do is brace your fingers on the bottom, pull up one side at a time, and I haven't had any problems. The uh, Super Nintendo seems to be the tightest, but again, it's just pull from one side, you're good to go, and let's see the SNE or NES here. Uh, nice tight connection, which is a good thing in my opinion and pull from the side and you're always good um, really my system I don't know might be, maybe mine is a little looser than some people's but really doesn't seem to be a problem at all just before we start the uh, system review and the gameplay footage I just wanted to show you um, I'll leave a link in the description below but this is the Retron 5 update instructions and from my experience you actually need to start with uh, the section down here titled Retron 5 system um, software update instructions. Basically, I believe you have to update the software before you update the hardware. Um, so they kind of have it backwards and it uh, it works for me by doing this step first and then actually going back up to uh, step one. Like I said, I will leave a link in the description so you guys um, can update your systems day one. And uh, it's a very good walkthrough here. It's, it's, it's a pretty simple process, so you shouldn't have any problems doing it itself. Just like I said, start with the last step first. Okay guys, now we're gonna get into some gameplay of the uh, Hyperkin Retron 5. I've got a uh, big stack of games here. I'm gonna move through these as quickly as possible, mainly to show you the graphics. So I, I'm gonna play, I don't know, a minute or two of, of each game. Not every game here, but we'll, uh, we'll flip through a bunch of stuff and see if, uh, Try kind of one of each at least. Uh, to power it up, you've got to actually hold the power button for um, a few seconds, five I believe. And you can't power it on with the controller, which is a little disappointing. Okay, so we got the boot screen. And I have the controller wired right now just because it's, uh, it's charging. And I, haven't, I don't think it'll charge without the system being on, and you can only charge one controller at a time. Not a huge deal, in my opinion. Um, it's something you can deal with. It would be nice to be able to charge both controllers. Um, I would assume you'd be able to charge one while playing. That should, that should, that should, should work. So, let's start off with... Um, the thing I'm most excited to show, actually, for some reason, is the uh, the Game Boy slot. I just think it's so cool that I can now um, capture video of Game Boy games and uh, play Game Boy games on the on the big screen. And one thing I quickly want to mention here: I'm going to play games in widescreen uh, because it's gorgeous. I'm I'm very very impressed with how well it uh, it it stretches the picture. Um, it honestly doesn't even look stretched to me. I'm just getting so used to playing games uh, in widescreen. It, they did a fantastic job. The widescreen is, is really gorgeous. Normally I would have said, you know, stick to uh, uh, the, the, the regular aspect ratio. But I really can't. Don't have many uh, complaints about the widescreen. looks great. So when you put a cartridge in, you'll see it loads. It actually loads it to the system memory. And then basically you're playing it off the uh, system after that, like basically just a, an emulator. This one's taking, this is the longest I've seen a game take. This is a, a dual Ninja Turtles game on the GBA that I picked up a couple weeks ago. And uh, I'm just super impressed with it. It's a really cool game. Uh, beat em up, much like um, 
uh, Turtles in Time kind of thing. So I really wanted to show you guys this game, and I, actually I haven't played it myself on here yet, so I kind of wanted to see how it looked. And then it'll a lot of times it'll put, uh, import the initial save if there's one on the cartridge to the system itself, which is really cool. Um, it's just nice to have in case uh, you ever you know you don't want to risk losing your Earthbound save or, or, or something like that. So it'll actually save it to the system. Um, I guess real quick I should show you the settings here. This is the interface. Um, it's a, a Android inter um, Android operating system. So we'll go down to settings here and you can see here's all the filters. And uh, what I actually did, which is really smart, is you can custom uh, map all of the buttons here. And what I did, I mapped the left button to the filter. So in game, I can actually just hit the left uh, button up top here and it'll switch through the filters. You'll see when we play. So that's my preference to have that as the filter because um, certain games don't need the filter. Certain games look better with, um, I think there's five or six different filters. And then the button on the right here, I kept as a fast forward button, which is very cool for RPGs, cutscenes that you don't want to watch on and off, uh, which gives it kind of that retro look. It looks really good. Here's the aspect ratio. I have it on stretch. Um, either stretch or normal is where I would keep it. Like I said, I'm going to leave it on stretch and let me know what you guys think. I'm, I'm very impressed. Uh, I haven't actually tried stretch on Game Boy Advance games, so we'll have to see how that looks. Uh, overscan, force original resolution, I don't really mess with those. Um, refresh rate, probably for um, European TVs have a different refresh rate, I believe. Uh, you just would leave it at match the game. You can change the screen size to suit your TV. Uh, audio enhancement I have on. It actually does boost the audio quite nicely. Um, there's also a bass boost, treble boost, um, graphic, um, GUI, graphic user interface, sound effects. You can turn those off and on because they can be kind of annoying. I don't mind it. I'm getting kind of used to it. Uh, manage controllers. You can go in here and um, like I said, change the shortcuts. You can see I have cycle filter, and on the right side I have fast forward, controller auto off, power off controllers, pair controllers. This is where you go to pair your controller. I had a little bit of an issue um, after or before I did the update of the system pairing my controller. So I actually had to plug in an actual uh, Super Nintendo controller to come in here and then pair through here instead of normally just push and hold the home button when on the initial setup. So uh, that was a little frustrating at first until I figured that out. And then controller mapping, um, you can change it for every controller. You can use Famicom or NES controllers for Genesis games, Genesis games, Genesis controllers for any other game. You can use basically use any controller on any game. It's really cool. Um, yeah, so you can change all that there. And uh, uh, button mapping, that's actually where you do that. Hot key configuration, console region, I just leave on auto. Um, auto load last state, really cool. So if I'm playing um, a game like a shmup and I just quit, the next time I put the shmup back in there, like Gary's, um, it'll actually put me back off to the exact point where I, where I stopped last time. Auto start cartridge, I leave off. Adam automatically import saves. You can switch that off. Save data, internal storage, file manager. You can manage your uh, uh, SD card, which is in the back. This is where you up, um, update the firmware, which I just showed you guys how to do that uh, to the SD card. And uh, that's about it. So I'm, I'm spending a lot of time here. This is, I don't want this to drag on, so I'm going to. Uh, get through a bunch of these games as quick as possible. I've, I've put about five, six hours into this, so I've, I feel like I've put it through its paces, but I just kind of want to demo some stuff for you guys. Uh, let me see this game menu. Yeah, so here's where you can do cheats, which I haven't really figured out yet. I haven't had the time to get into that. Um, you can copy the save. You can actually copy the save from the Retron back to the cartridge. Um, I have heard there's been some issues with that not working and at sometimes um, actually erasing saves on your cartridge. I believe Mario RPG was one of the ones I heard um, that happens with, so you got to be careful with that right now. But uh, these are all things that can be updated through firmware, which is fantastic, the, the great thing about this system. So I'm going to go ahead finally here and hit play. So right off the bat, um, 
just by the lettering it looks impressed pretty good um still looks okay here it actually looks better my tv colors aren't, aren't great it actually looks better on the capture there so the feed that you guys are seeing should look pretty good so i'm gonna go ahead and hit, hit the left button here to switch filters that's with no filter so you'll see change to none on the bottom there um sometimes like i said you got to really try different filters and you'll find one that really works super eagle seems to be a good one a lot of the time um, that's more pixelated. Sometimes some are a little blurry. That's not bad. None. I think Super Eagle is the way to go a lot of the time. So uh, we'll give this a try. Two games here on one on one um, one cartridge. Go ahead and start here. Watch all this. Um, so off the bat, these games don't quite look as good. Maybe it wasn't the best game to start with um, in, in widescreen, but it still looks pretty good to me. Like I can definitely play play like this. Here we go. I'm really impressed with the controls in this game. Uh, there only seems to be one plane, unlike the other games. At least in this, maybe I can jump. Can I jump up? Yeah, I can jump up. Okay, so there's multiple planes. Sometimes you can't move back and forth. Usually in these games, there's like three or four planes where you have full movement. Uh, the controller works good with this game. Like I said, the controller takes a little getting used to just where to find, um, especially in games like Zombies, Ate My Neighbors, uh, where to find the diagonal points. But um, yeah, you get a good idea of how this game looks. And uh, I highly recommend you try and find this game. Either of them are, are really good. At least the first one I know is good. The second one I haven't put much time into. Uh, Battle of the Nexus, or Battle into the Nexus for the Game Boy Color, or Game Boy Advance, sorry. So we're gonna go ahead and hit the home button here to back out. And we will um, try another game here. Let's try an original uh, Game Boy game. Uh, I'm gonna go with Donkey Kong. In my opinion, one of the best um, original Game Boy games. Fantastic game. As you can see, that one loads super quick. Most of them do, depending on how much data is on the on, cut on the card itself. Um, don't know what happened there. Kind of rebooted me. I love this game so much. So we'll mess with the filters again. You can see that's what it looks like originally, with no filter applied. Which still looks really nice in, in uh, through HDMI. And I'm really, like I said, I, I still can't get over, you see how blurry that one is? I still can't get over how good it looks in widescreen. Really impressed with that. That's something that I did not expect. See here you can fast forward, get to the game. So from what I remember, and you can see actually, I just noticed it actually colorized it. It's not in black and white. So this is one of the games that the uh, Game Boy player actually applied the color to, I believe. Uh, still getting used to that stick. From what I remember, the first level is typical uh, Donkey Kong, but then it gets a little different.
<laughs> I need to get to the second stage to show you guys how this looks. Alright, so we'll go ahead and put another game in here. Uh, let's go with, we'll go with Star Fox. I haven't tried this one out yet, but from what I've heard, it works fine with the FX chip. I do from time to time get a game that won't load. Um, I've had to actually adjust the Super Nintendo slot a little bit, sometimes let the cartridge up a little bit. Here's, you can see I'm fast forwarding here, and there's the regular speed. Stuff like this, like they're perfect for the fast forward button. Go ahead and start here. That looks absolutely gorgeous. Really impressed with the visuals on this, I, I couldn't be happier. Oh, it's been a long time since I played this. Just gonna play this for a little bit here to give you guys an idea of how it looks. Uh, it controls really well for this game. I'm actually enjoying the controller. Like I said, it's a nice option to have. Um, you can always use your original controllers, and I completely understand that, but uh, it's nice having that micro switch kind of joypad thing. So yeah, that's Star Fox. I'm going to blaze through a couple more here. Zombies ate my neighbors. And see, I was playing this earlier and it brought me exactly to where I uh, left off. So here's the game that uses the diagonals. Like I said, it, it, it takes a little getting used to to find uh, the point that you need to push that diagonal at. But uh, once you get a little practice, um, it, it works quite well. This is another game that looks really, really impressive. Just gotta kind of find, almost like an arcade stick. You gotta find that the point where you need to push it. And the sound has I've actually been, I've been impressed with pretty much everything when it comes to graphic wise and sound. Like I said, there's little hiccups, um, you know, in terms of getting the firmware updated, um, stuff like that. Once in a while, it won't read a game, but that's gonna happen. I was expecting that. And it's nice having that micro switch for when it when it comes to shooting. Any kind of shooting. So I don't know if you can hear that, you can really uh, get the rapid fire going. Really nice. And we'll back out of here and let's let's try a Genesis game. Um uh, Genesis, let's see. 
let's try the Punisher. Great side scrolling beat him up. And once again, it should take me right where we left off. Me and my, ne my nephew and I were playing this. I actually love the sound of that little click. Just kind of gives you some feedback that you're actually, when you're hitting the button. through the window. This game looks really good. Like I said, very impressed with the, uh, with the visuals. So, uh, I'm going to try one more game here. Uh, actually, we're going to try a Super Famicom game, and then we're going to try the Power Base Converter, which I was having a little trouble with before, so we'll see. And that was before the update, so I haven't tried it since I've updated. Uh, so this is Spider-Man and X-Men on the Super Famicom. Only have two games. Uh, so yeah, I haven't had many troubles reading games. Once in a while you have to pull it out and uh, do it again. I've had to power off the system uh, once or twice. But then the, the game works, so little kinks here and there. Nothing really unexpected. Okay, that's Spider-Man for the Super Famicom. Oh, I guess I should try an NES game quickly. Let's uh, give Metroid a shot. filter and then there's my personal favorite super eagle super eagle seems to be a safe bet most of the time Again, the controls, the uh, controller for this game seems pretty good. I haven't really, surprisingly, I, I tried Street Fighter um, uh, earlier. And I can't get up that far. Um, and I wasn't, I feel like I wasn't sensing the diagonals the way I would have liked it.
Sorry guys, I know I'm breezing through this really quickly here, but um, I'll definitely be doing some gameplay on this for sure. I just wanted to quickly show you guys how all the games kind of look and work. So here's the power base converter. Now before the update, it wasn't working too well. Okay, so that has been a quick overview and uh, some gameplay of the Retron 5. Um, would I buy the Retron 5? Um, or should you buy the Retron 5 is the question. Uh, I would say yes at $139.99. I think the price is right about where it should be. Um, obviously at $100 it was a much better deal, but still I think for what you're getting here, uh, it's worth the $140 plus tax. So. Overall, I'm very happy with it. When the games work, um, they're absolutely gorgeous. The options are, you know, too many to count. The sound is fantastic. I'm really, really impressed with uh, how beautiful everything looks. And like I said, stretched in widescreen, it's it's gorgeous. It looks, I'm, I'm super impressed. So on a big screen, it should look really good. Um, I'm actually gonna be using this, I think, on my tube TV downstairs, so, which has an HDMI input. So I gotta see how that looks too. Um, but yeah, the controllers, um, you know, it's not the greatest controller, but it's a huge, huge step up, step up from the uh, previous, from the Retron 3. Um, like I said, as a companion to uh, the original controllers, I think it's 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 great. I like the mic micro switches in it, um, the, the joypad, the Neo Geo style uh, stick. Um, it takes a little getting used to. The wireless range is great. Um, you can be 10 feet away not facing it and the Bluetooth connection will never drop. Haven't had any issues with the uh, um, controller losing connection. So um, overall, I I personally enjoy the controllers. Um, you know, like I said, they're not the greatest controller ever made, but um, I'm pretty happy with them. Um, so yeah, the system itself, like I said, pretty pretty quality. Uh, pretty pretty well made considering you know they companies tend to use cheaper plastics these days from the 90s as I said in my unboxing um, if you haven't seen the unboxing feel free to check out the video okay guys that's been my review of the Retron 5 uh, com uh, retro gaming system from Hyperkin uh, once again thank you to Good Time Games for having this ready for me uh, day one like I said I pre-ordered it uh, the day it was announced and it was awesome that I was able to get it on release date so um, I know it's been People have been backed up because it's such a popular item right now. So it's it might be a little while before you'll be able to get your hands on one. But um, in my opinion, it's well worth it, and I would highly recommend that you pick it up. So um, yeah, like I said, as always, like, comment, subscribe. Let me know what you think of the Retron Five, and if you're going to pick one up for yourself. And uh, check out the Facebook page. Um, I'll leave a link for Good Time Games below. And uh, feel free to go back and watch the unboxing. I'll post a link to that video um, right here. And uh, once again, guys, thank you so much for watching. Later.